So don't put the screen up. I'm coming. And the added component of this is that not only is my job in jeopardy, but my life is now in jeopardy. And so what, what, what do you do, church family, when, 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 if and when you find yourself in a situation where your beliefs in Christ Jesus are now are well known in the marketplace that, you admit, that you're serving in, and somebody in the, in the marketplace you're serving in tries to find a way to, I mean, you're, getting, you're just getting a little bit too much favor. I mean, you, you know, you're getting all the good projects for some reason. You, you know, you, you seem to be getting the recognition. You know, the, the CEO wants to know who you are because you seem to be producing all the right stuff. And somebody, somebody in that, in that, in that job setting out there, can somebody talk to me like they know what I'm talking about? It's in the background scheming why you're just doing what God has, has designed for you to do. You know, you're not out there watching them. You, you're not out there listening. You don't have your ear to keyholes worrying about what's going on. You're, you're not out there trying to figure out oh, what the enemy's up to. You're just doing what God has sent you there to do. And hopping in, in the shadows and in the darkness of night and, and you know, when nobody's looking and, and, and nobody knows, they're slipping around behind holding these little sub meetings. Man, I'm going back to Corbin now. They're meeting in the back rooms, you know, you're not invited. <laughs> They're scheming and they're making their little plans. How are we going to get this mother out of this? How are we going to get this sister out of this job? You know, because if we get them out of this job, then one of us got an opportunity to be promoted. You know, so, so let's band together and see if we can't get rid of this, this man or woman here. That they seem to be getting all the favor and all the attention. And then now we got to manipulate and change the mind of the, of the decision maker. And so let's just go in there and unify force and let them know that you need to, this is what you need to do. And so when they come with full force against you, and the decree has been set, you can't be bringing that Bible into this place. We're not going to allow any more prayer. That little prayer group you wanted to have before, us, before a word? We're not making any offices available for that anymore. Because we had somebody come and complain. I don't want to see you bowing your, I don't want to see nobody bowing their heads over their meals at lunchtime in this building. Come on, say that's not going to happen. And we're going to bring the full force of the corporation behind what we're doing. And the question is, what do you do, church family? Think about it now before your challenge comes. That's right. I believe Daniel, I believe the Lord had prepared Daniel's heart over the, over the history of his time there. Prepared him before he got to Babylon. Prepared him while he was in Babylon. Walked him through a number of different experiences with Nebuchadnezzar and Belshazzar doing his journey while in, in Babylon to make sure that he understands that God is in charge. Right. He told Daniel to tell him, I put you in office and I can take you out of office. I'm in charge of this situation and I'm favoring this young man. So Daniel hears about the writing, hears that the, the document has been signed. Old enemies have risen up once again and just trying some new, new avenue in order to get him out and he has the choice to make and this is what Daniel does. He goes on doing what God had called him to do. You telling me that if I pray, you telling me if I if I pray three times a day, if I continue to worship my God, I continue to praise Him, the God that gave me breath. Come on, I'm on the only reason I'm here today Come on, because God is allowing me to stand before you, telling me that the God who woke me up this morning, the only reason I can open my eyes and look at you today is because God gave me enough with the power of my body to wake me up and open up my eyes. The only reason I'm standing here in front of you today is because God given me strength in my body and a right mind. The only reason I got the job that I'm standing in, that I'm here to do today, is because God has given me. And you're telling me that I've got to make a choice between the God who's given me everything that I am, everything that I have, and everything that I will have, or, or worship you, worship God, 
That is that I'm going to not only pray, I'm going to open up my window. I want y'all to know that I'm praying in here, just in case you got any doubt which choice I'm making. I'm going to open up my windows, I'm going to point, I'm going to put my head towards the room, and if I got any voice left in me, I'm going to be praising my God. You can do what you need to do. Because I've already seen him deliver Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I mean, you, know, you, you didn't catch that lesson, did you, back in the... You should have been there when he was in the fire, wasn't it? And you think my God can't deal with some harm? In the text, that's what they do, is they get all excited because they think that their scheme has now worked perfectly. They have, they have placed Daniel in a box in their thinking that he cannot get out of. If he chooses Darius, his God will forsake them. If he chooses his God, Darius will forsake them. And he will, that's what they're thinking. And so the text says that they, and they start running and shouting and, and, and getting all happy about the fact that Daniel has done what they thought that he would surely do. Either way, the chess move had been placed into place. And then, they, and then the text continues down in the king, and they run to the king and basically said, you see, this Daniel whom you placed over us, a president among presidents, this Daniel is praying. You just signed, Darius, you just signed the law. Daniel is praying. The law is irrefutable. You can't change the law to Daniel. Daniel is now praying. And you got to do something about it. And we pick up with verse number, verse, verse, that's the verse 12 through 14, so. Let me pick it up with verse 15, if you don't mind, from the Aaron 5. Then these same men came thronging by agreement to the king and said, Know, O king, that it is a law of the Medes and the Persians, that no decree or statute which the king establishes may be changed or repealed. Then the king commanded, and Daniel was brought and cast into the den of the lions. The king said to Daniel, May your God, whom you are serving, continually deliver you. And a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring, with the signet of his, of his lords, that there may be no change of purpose concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting. Neither were instruments of music or dancing girls brought before him, and his sleep fled from him. Second life lesson for John is this one. It was Daniel's challenge, it was Darius's challenge. When you face life threatening decisions, trust in God's wisdom and his power. Now let me flip over to Darius for a moment. You get the contrast now. Daniel's got his life threatening decision that he has to make, life altering decision that he has to make. And he stands for God. Darius has now been placed in the box. And he, he knows something. He sees God's favor on Daniel. And, under, and, and perceives that there's a, the spirit of God working in the man. And making something special happen through the man. And yet, he's in, you, can, you can feel his conflict in the text. In the verses. When he hears this. The earlier texts tell us that, that Darius tries to, find, tries to find some ways to get around the law that he's just been maneuvered and influenced and assigned. And he, and he struggles, he wrestles with this thing. He, 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 I signed the law, it's irrefutable, what can I do? And, and he's trying to find a way around this thing and the text, the text is telling us that he's not able to find any way in his human way of thinking to resolve this uh, this seemingly unresolvable situation. And so he has to go through the process of now sentencing Daniel to what seems to be death in the lion's den. But while he's sentencing Daniel, you, you see the contrast of Daniel's strength in the midst of, this check, of the decision point. You see Darius's weakness in the midst of this decision point. But you also see God working. Mm -hmm. At least that's what I'm seeing in the text. God's still working with the man. Because you hear some of his heart, even as he's casting Daniel in 